Hi guys, for those of you who missed class on Friday, we had a bit of technical difficulty, so I just want to highlight a couple things for you. Um, please read the notes that I posted from day four about block design and why we use it. But here is block design. It is dealing with the example 21, I believe, over textures. And what they want to do is they want to take an X variable and that X variable is the keyboard, which you see highlighted right here. They want to compare keyboard A and keyboard B. Okay, so keyboard A and keyboard B. So our X variable here is keyboard A and keyboard B. And we want to look at the response. And the response is here, the number of correct words. Well, then we talked about, well, hey, there's this Z variable. And that Z variable is, well, how good are you at texting? Is the X variable really influencing the Y variable? So is the keyboard A really the, or is the result, excuse me, the number of correct words really because of keyboard A or B? Or is it because that person was a really good texter and there was a bunch of really good texters in that group? And in the other group, there was a bunch of people who weren't very good texters. So what we need to do is we need to control and we control that by doing a block design. And what I said in class, and you can see in the notes, is block design is to experiments as stratified sampling is to observational studies. They're the same words, or, I'm sorry, the same concept, the Hunger Games concept. It is just different methods. One's an observational study, one is an experiment. So what we do is we block, and we block by how often we text. And you can see that right here and right here. And I started, instead of doing the three groups and then drawing a line and seeing random assignment, I started just doing what the book did, and they drew an arrow and said, okay, we need to randomly assign to two groups. We have our 100 frequent texters, group one, group two of 50 each, one gets keyboard A, one gets keyboard B, and then we look at the number of correct words. We do that again for infrequent texters. They get a random assignment using the hat method, 100 in group one, 100 in group two, Keyboard A, keyboard B, and we look at the number of correct words. We said, what if keyboard A wins in the frequent texture group and keyboard B wins in the frequent texture group? Well, then we have insufficient evidence. But if keyboard A won in the first in the block one and keyboard A won also by a landslide significantly in both groups, we can almost certainly say that the response, the number of correct words, is because of keyboard, oops, keyboard A, and not because of that lurking variable. And that's the purpose of a block design. Next, we move on to the match pairs design. The match pairs design is where a subject or the unit gets both treatments. And why do we do a match pairs, pairs, excuse me, match pairs design? I did this and I showed a comparative randomized design with boots. And I, talk, and I said, I own a company, I own Ugg, Uggs Boots Company. And I just came up with a new spray. And I want to compare and I want to see the quality of the leather if the new spray is better than the old spray. And you can see that new spray here and the old spray there. And so I have a bunch of subjects. They go to group one, you can see, in group two. They get the old spray, new spray, and then I look at the quality of leather. But once again, we have this lurking variable, and we talked about, well, where do you wear your boots, right? Like, are some people outside all the time, or some people go from one garage to the other? So an explanation of why do we need match pairs is similar to a block. We don't know if the result the boots and the quality did okay because of the treatment, the spray, or did people not go outside as much? Okay, low lurking variable. We don't know. So we come up with what we call a matched pairs design where someone gets two treatments. The subjects are here. Everyone gets boots. You come to me and you say, okay, I have my boots. I flip a coin. If you have heads, you can wear the old spray on your left foot, the new spray on your right foot. If you flip tails, the new spray on your left foot, the old spray on your right. Then after six weeks or whatever, we go and we look at the boots and we look at the quality of leather after exposure to the elements, rain, snow, so on. And if we get significant results saying one is better than the other, we know that it is because of the X variable. 
we know it's because of the treatments there and not because of any lurking variables. This is a quick power five-minute video. If you have any other questions, let me know and have a great weekend.